Hey friends, welcome to another video. This is super exciting for me since my favorite YouTube creators when it comes to Final Cut Pro are collaborating with me in this very video. Dylan Bates, aka the Final Cut Pro, Brad and Donna and Dylan John are joining me today on this very video to show you our favorite editing techniques in Final Cut Pro. Make sure to check out their channels and hit the subscribe button over there as well to get the chance to learn from those amazing creators as well. Let's jump right into four of our favorite editing techniques. Do I look like him? <laughs> Thanks Eric for having me on the channel. My name is Dylan. My channel is called Dylan John and today I'm going to go over one of my favorite editing techniques which is utilizing the awesome sound design capabilities in Final Cut Pro to make your video sound realistic and immersive. So you can go from this to this with all added sound effects. Sound design is one of my favorite aspects of editing and specifically utilizing the different surround pan modes which can be found in the audio inspector. We'll go over this in a second. Currently our audio is using stereo audio and we can tell that by just looking up at the project parameters up here. Since I'm wanting to create a surround sound experience so someone wearing headphones will feel like they're immersed in the scene playing out in front of them, I'll change my audio to surround by clicking on my project, clicking modify and changing audio to surround. Now you'll notice that if we bring up our audio meters by pressing the shortcut shift command 8, we have six different audio channels to work with. I don't have a ton of time so I'll just go over the two types of pan modes that are arguably the most useful when creating your sound environment, ambience and create space. Ambience is a great pan mode that will change a sound effect to sound like it is enveloped around you. So for example, if you have a shot of the beach, click your beach sound effect, click the ambience pan mode, and now your sound effect is playing more in the surround audio channels and less in the front and center left right channels. Create space is going to be the pan mode you will use to pinpoint specific sounds in your sound environment so they sound clearer and a little more exact. So we have this shot of the tide coming by us, so we'll find a sound effect that that would match what this would actually sound like. We'll click the create space pan mode and we'll start to animate our sound. This center point is essentially where your camera or listener, however you want to think of it, is situated in the scene. Since our tide starts a little to the right and finishes going past and behind the camera, I'll press the keyframe button, move our sound effect slider a little to the right here since that's where the tide is. And we'll find the point in the shot where the tide goes behind the camera and we'll move the sound slider to the far left. Now the sound effect is animated animated to match the visuals in our shot. Of course there is a lot more that you can do with sound design in Final Cut Pro, so give my channel a look whenever you get the chance. Thank you Eric again for having me on. Hey friends, my name is Dylan Bates and my channel is called The Final Cut Bro. One of my favorite editing techniques in Final Cut Pro is the use of shape masks and color masks. So when I talk about shape masks, you might think I'm talking about this effect here in the browser where you can drag that on and it will mask your clip. But that's not actually what I am referencing. What I'm talking about is let's say I throw on a bad TV effect. On any of these effects, I can actually come up here to the top and click on this little circle within the rectangle and click add shape mask. Now this effect will only be applied within the radius of this circle. And this outer circle is actually representing the feathering. This inner circle is representing the size. So I really like shape masks because you can apply specific effects to single parts of your frame. Now let's say that I wanted the outer edges of this to have the bad TV effect. Well, if I click and add my shape mask, I can come back to this circle within the rectangle and click invert masks. And now the bad TV effect is applied to the outer edges of the frame. The second aspect I really love is the color masks. So once again, I'll add that bad TV effect, click on the circle, add color masks, and let's just select the green of these trees. Now you'll notice that the effect is only applied to the trees, so you can get really interesting looking effects just with a couple clicks. Thank you so much for watching my small portion of this video. If you want, you can check out my channel, The Final Cut Bro, and I would love to see you there. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Hey, what's up? My name is Brad, and my channel is called Brad and Donna. Eric invited me to chat about my favorite editing technique, and it's got to be speed ramping. I have this shot here of me and a friend jumping into the waves in Bali that was shot at 240 frames per second. 
For the best results when you slow a clip down, you'll want to shoot at a higher frame rate like 60 or 120 or 240 frames per second. I want this clip to play back at normal speed up to here, then I want it to slow down. So I'll hold my playhead over the clip here and I'll hit Shift B to make a speed cut. I want all of this to be slowed down and then over here I want to go back to normal speed. I'll hit Shift B again to make another speed cut. I'll select the middle section over here and I'll slow it down to 10%. You can adjust how long the transition from normal speed to 10% speed is by using these handles over here. If you need to adjust the speed cut point, you can double click on this cut and drag it left or right. Let's play that back. But by far, my favorite way to use the speed ramp technique is for transitions, where we ramp from one shot into the other. Looking at these two clips of Donna here, we go from slow motion and ramp up into 400% speed in the first shot, and from 2000% speed back to 20% speed in the second shot. We can add a cheeky little whoosh sound effect in here, and this is what you get. That's it from me guys. Thanks to Eric for having me and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Now my favorite editing technique is definitely the J cut. The J cut is a super simple but yet very effective technique to make dialogue or monologue look way smoother and way more interesting. So when you have to cut right here and play it back, the person stops to talk, then there is the cut and then the person starts to talk techniques in Final Cut Pro. Make sure to check out their channels. That makes the cut even more obvious and it distracts from the content. To smooth that out, we are selecting both clips and then clicking on expand audio. And now we are able to cut the audio separately from the footage. Now delete a couple of frames from the second clip so the audio comes before the video and the audio of both clips overlap just a little bit. Final Cut Pro, make sure to check out their channels and hit the And as you can see, it looks way more smooth and has way more flow. Now that's it for today. Make sure to check out the channels of Dylan John, Brad and Donna and the Final Cut Bro. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.